Today we're talking about this 1970s Canon Rangefinder Beauty. Stick around to see it in action. I'm Jamie Maldonado, and we're here today to talk about the Canonet, the Canonet QL17 G3 um, QL. It's a long, okay, Canonet. I'm gonna cut to some, some slow motion here. This is the Canonet QL17 G3 QL, which is on here twice. So I don't really know if that's the correct way to say it. The QL means quick load, by the way. Out to the line. They say this is all you need to do. This little thing right here, it just clasps down on the film. It really is a, a nice quick load. Um, so uh bravo 1970s canon yeah so in the 70s and probably through the 60s there was a big thing with rangefinder cameras especially these uh, all-in-one fixed lens rangefinder things uh, i guess it was a point and shoot camera of its time or like the rage of like advanced point and shoots there's full manual control the lens is pretty decent Let's see if i can see through the rangefinder on here yeah, you see through the rangefinder, you line up. It'll never line up on my face right now. But uh, you line up the images in the patch, and that's how you get focus. It's got built-in parallax correction. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go out and take a few shots with this. So join me, I guess. These first shots on Kodak Gold 200 showed a lot of promise, so I loaded the Canonet up with some Ilford Delta 100 and then some Kodak Color Plus and I hit a local trail. are really bright very not friendly for photography in general i was wondering if i could manage it with a max 1 500th of a second shutter speed at least on the color film without that wasn't filtered but it wasn't that bad at all even better the camera never felt heavy or distracting when i was making the rounds I also didn't feel like i was drawing undue attention to myself i'm calling this one apocalypse leica well as i talk over air conditioner noise here because it's really hot. It's a rangefinder, obviously, and it's very sharp. It's nice and compact. It's sturdy. It's kind of like a lot of the qualities people look for in a Leica, except for it's cheap and uh, it's durable and no one's got money right now because it's kind of the apocalypse. Wait, I gotta turn the air back up. This is Texas, yo. The light seals look kind of trashy, but they seem to work just fine. Uh, it's missing the battery check button and the light meter doesn't work. You have to be careful with the film advance because it's possible to do like this and then push it the rest of the way. But the problem with that is I noticed I had that happen a couple times on one of my rolls of film and I had overlapping frames. So you need to make sure to get a firm wind on that or else you might wind up having a little problem although that could be kind of cool uh, in certain situations it's helpful indicator windows that tell you if you're winding film and that if your shutter is uh is cocked i've used a leica before a leica MP m4p which was beautiful beautiful camera um the rangefinder is 
as advertised, it's spectacular. Using this, having already used that, I feel like this is pretty good. It doesn't quite have that legendary like a pop when you hit your focus, but you can tell pretty well that you're in focus. The patch is very solid. The parallax correction is pretty neat. It kind of floats around as you focus in and out. I did not find it particularly problematic, but through three rolls of film, I didn't also try to like challenge it too much. But for general shooting, it was fine. It works. I don't need a battery. It's uh, it could survive the EMP, which is super important considering that I'm calling this the Apocalypse Leica. And the biggest complaint I have about this camera, which is an otherwise very lovely, sturdy camera. This is a 48 millimeter filter ring. I have so many adapters of all kinds that I've collected over the years. Not one, not a single one is 48. I have 46. I have 49. I do not have 48. I do not know what possessed Canon in the 70s to use such a stupid filter size. But um, I'll just get an adapter and live with it. That's another thing I like about range finders. So you can filter this thing up like ND filter because you could put it on here and you would still have uninterrupted view on your range finder. You have the classic range finder thing where people like to point out with range finders is that you can like look at someone with a camera in your eye. I might get a headache doing this, but I don't know what else to say about it other than rugged. Not too many complaints about it. But I wanted to get a little camera I could kind of unobtrusively carry around with me and wherever I'm going in this wasteland that we live in now. I'm particularly pleased with my Ilford Delta 100 shots. I filtered them all yellow like I mentioned, and I think it added just a little hint of contrast that really helped them pop. But still, the photos were all very crisp and the camera was very easy to use on a walk without drawing too much attention. I might invest in a strap, maybe. If you like kind of these BTS things that I'm doing, behind the scenes stuff, not the, not the um, K-pop group, talking about film, and often interlacing it with digital, like you saw last week with my infrared and color infrared trichrome Photoshop experiment. Subscribe to my channel. What's well, something more creative I can say than click the like button and subscribe and turn on notifications. Thank you to my patrons. I'm continually working to not be crappy. But yeah, um, I really dig this thing. I uh, don't need any of the automated settings, so you'll probably have to pay a bit more if you want your light meter to work. And I can't comment on the quality of said light meter. The lens felt very sharp. I was very pleased with it. I would recommend this if you're looking for a little, not super casual because it's not exactly light, but a casual, not quite pocketable, not burdensome camera that you can bring along and get quality photos with a fixed lens. It knocks a lot of things out of the way, it takes mercury cells, so the battery is funky. If you do need a meter and you get a functioning one, I don't know if you really want to use the meter. So maybe find a broken one like I did and get a good deal and have yourself a nice sharp range finder for not much money. It's not my everyday camera. I probably wouldn't use it for many portraits other than like maybe street type portraits, casual portraits. But if you're looking for a camera like that, a camera you can just take around with you and that maybe you can play with things that you no normally don't play with or just kind of document everyday life with, this might be a really great candidate to look at. You can find them between 60 and $150.
and thanks for watching. Click the circle to subscribe to my channel. Click the card on the top right to see YouTube's pick of my videos for you. Click on the bottom left to see some fun film reviews and click on the bottom right to see everything I've ever done on YouTube pretty much. Thanks. I'll see you next week.